My name is Donald John Trump. I am 74 years old and have been serving as the 45th President of the United States since January 20th, 2017. I was 70 years old at the time of my inauguration. That makes me the oldest president in American history. It's also the first time a businessman with no background in the military or government has become president. Do you understand how incredible that is? And in the November election, I was supposed to become the oldest elected president yet again. But I lost to Biden, <laughs> that cheating bastard. And the media treated me so badly leading up to the election. Oxford Economics, based in Oxford, UK, made an ominous prediction that I would lose. Because of my response to the coronavirus, the right-leaning Fox News Network released results for registered voters on the 21st, using data gathered between May 17th to the 20th and it showed that more of those guys were voting for Biden than me. So I wrote some angry tweets on my phone. Fox News is doing nothing to help Republicans and me get reelected on November 3rd. Sure, there are some truly great people on Fox, but you also have some real garbage littered all over the network. People like Neil Caviuto, Richard Goodstein, and Donna Brazil. They repeat the worst of the Democrat talking points and lies all of the good we do is totally nullified by them. These people who only spread bad information about me are garbage. What is this radicalism? Somebody, tell me. I think my wonderful eccentric personality is due to the environment I was born and raised into. I'll talk about my family for a bit. I was born June 14, 1946 in Queens, New York City, New York. Our home was in a high class area called Jamaica Estates. Oh, how nostalgic. In those days, Queens was 95% white, and there wasn't much wealth disparity. The other parts of the city were quite rough, but Jamaica Estates was like an oasis. People were struggling just to get by in those days. That's what inspired me to succeed and make America a better country. My father's name was Fred Trump. I'll just call him Fred from here on. Fred was a real estate developer based in Queens, who also owned and managed some apartment complexes. To put it simply, he was difficult to deal with. He said that education was essential and that my siblings and I were all in a zero-sum game of winning and losing. Only those with power can decide right from wrong. Lying is not wrong, but a part of life. Apologies and weaknesses are for losers and dogs. I think that it was a rather extreme approach to education. I was the fourth of five siblings, and my father's way of thinking was a problem for us. I was desperate for my father's approval, and my siblings were nothing more than obstacles towards this end. I was enrolled in the prestigious private Q Forest School and started wearing a necktie every day. But in the end, the school couldn't pacify someone as restless and strong-headed as me. In 1959, when I was 13, I was kicked out of the seventh grade for poor behavior. No wonder. I was a bully and I punched a teacher. In the eighth grade, my parents sent me to the New York Military Academy, NYMA, a private boys boarding school known for its emphasis on military education. I had to wear a uniform and stay in a small shared room. While at the New York Military Academy, I played baseball, American football, and soccer. In an interview, one of my former high school classmates went on and on about my glory days back then. He said I could have been a major league pitcher. I could have done big things in American football and soccer as well. I was gifted both physically and mentally. However, I didn't have my parents, friends, or access to my father's mansion at the New York Military Academy. It was a strict school with a hierarchy and tough discipline. Many of the teachers and staff at NYMA were World War II veterans, and they treated the students roughly, both physically and mentally. They hit us a lot. From my experiences there, I realized that the weak would be crushed in the real world, so I learned to compete and win. I decided to be the best at everything, even the cafeteria line. I felt that being number one was the best and wanted to feel like a winner. I graduated from New York Military Academy as the highest ranking cadet in my class. I can say that, molded by military education, I learned to control myself. Perhaps this experience influenced my military ethos. Afterwards, 
In 1964, at the age of 18, I returned home to attend Fordham University. I had been away from my parents for a while and wanted to study close to home so I could learn about my father's business. I spent my time in college learning about it. And the more I learned, the more confident I became that I could improve my father's business. In 1966, I transferred from Fordham to the prestigious Wharton School of Finance and Commerce, now Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania, where I decided to study real estate. Even after the transfer, I returned to New York on weekends to apprentice in the family business. While in school, I rebuilt Swift Village and Ohio Estate with my father. In 1968, when I was 22, and after graduating from school with a bachelor's degree, I joined my father's company, Elizabeth Trump & Son. The economy was bad in New York during the 1970s, so real estate prices were low. I used to look up to my father as a businessman. I saw Fred bribing politicians and making use of his various connections. I started helping at my father's company and was promised an easy life by taking over his rental properties in the Queens area and others. However, those born with ambition strive for greater heights. In 1971, I took over my father's business and renamed it the Trump Organization. At the age of 25, I took control of the company and moved it from Queens and Brooklyn to Manhattan, where there are many high-valued properties. I bought the hotel by Grand Central Station, which had fallen into slum-like conditions renovated it, and turned the area into a major tourist destination. I transformed a massive rail yard on the west bank of Manhattan into one of the world's leading luxury condominiums. And it's no secret that I've built many of Manhattan's landmarks, including Trump Tower on Fifth Avenue. It's not an exaggeration to say that I'm responsible for Manhattan's current splendor. I was filled with confidence at that time. I really believed that I was a real estate tycoon on the rise. I never listened to the advice from the people around me. I could go on for hours with other stories, but let's just say it was a heroic past. But I overborrowed, and in the early 90s, some of the casino hotels I ran went bankrupt. I ended up selling a lot of my real estate, including the Plaza Hotel. I blame it all on my wife at the time, who I entrusted with managing them. They wouldn't have failed on my watch. I started doing everything myself. Businessman Trump was making a comeback. In the second half of the 90s, I regained momentum and advanced my business. I started a number of side ventures by licensing out my name. A great success. I feel incredible. That's right. I'm the real estate king, second to none. After gaining the status and respect of being a real estate tycoon, I aim to be the best in America. I was only interested in winning and had a drive to win at all costs. I feel that I spent too much time raising my own social status and not enough on finding a meaningful story about life or this country. Donald Trump is always playing the part of Donald Trump, fighting to win, even I don't know why. To put it simply, the biggest reason I'm aiming for the White House is to bring myself closer to living a perfect life. No one can stop me. I'll keep running until I die. My life since becoming president has also been interesting. But for now, I haven't won a second term because of this fraudulent election. The next episode will come out once I'm president again. Who needs Twitter and Facebook? Ha! <laughs> I'll make a new one. And I'll let the world know that I'm right. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. This YouTube channel introduces stories of various genres, including shocking news and unsolved cases from around the world, the biography of great men, mysterious stories from Asia, and more, all in the form of comics. You'll find plenty of content that appeals to your intellectual curiosity.